Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker. I'm your host, Bring It Dawn, and we're going to start off by going to sleep. Uh, you wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. In it, you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. A quick look out of the window, and you find that the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream. And then... Please. Alright, Guardian of the Bloom. The half-transparent outline of a beautiful nymph appears before you. Even in this ghostly form, it's clear that she's exhausted. Her shoulders are slouched, and her large blue eyes burn with, within her pale face. And it, it describes her voice as barely more than a whisper as she reaches toward you. It seems that only you can see or hear the nymph. Uh, yeah, what do you want from me? Aid. Salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Stag Lord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Stag Lord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. Forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. So I have a day to save you? Uh, let's ask who she is. Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself. The bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area. A defeated guardian. Call me the guardian of the bloom, if you wish. Or for short, I'll call you GOTB or Gatub. Um, I'm not going to hit on her. Not interested. Um, and why would I make that? I'll ask. Yes. Oh, okay. It hides says. his fortress as well as his dark deeds. But while responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid who has betrayed even himself. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. All right, uh, how can I help you? This fog, it enshrouds, entangles, suffocates. If only I could learn how it was created, but my powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house, and it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid were there. The fog hides this place from me, but I can point you to the bandits' camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there. And listen to the echo, catch the whispers, search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again, and you will be able to easily find your way to the fortress of our mutual enemy. All right, I understand. Farewell. I don't believe in fate, stranger. But our meeting seems more than a coincidence. And then Whisper fades as she disappears. <laughs> Safe location. There are no threats in this location. It's sort of headquarters where you pay your party for the new expedition. It's such locations. Companions will follow you around and we'll go about their own business. Alright, so we can talk to our companions if we want to here. I'm interested in buying some better armor, because let's see how much money am I sitting on right now. 1260, and I have stuff to sell as well. This is Fitlana. She have... Wait a second. Who is this? Anyway, uh... Good day, I hope you're feeling alright after that battle. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. I definitely don't want to waste your time, but if you have a moment, I have a request. Uh, what did you want to ask me? Uh, she lowers her head. 
This is a very personal request, and maybe not important enough for your time. I completely understand if you say no. The first time the Stag Lord's, thug Stag Lord's thugs came here demanding money, they also took my wedding ring, just tore it off my hand. It's a trinket, really, but it meant so much to me. I remember every moment of the day Oleg came to me, that ring in hand, to ask if I'd marry him. I was standing in a fancy dress on the stairs of my father's home, fearing that I'd misheard something, or that I'd say something stupid and everyone around would laugh. Svalon interrupts herself, shaking her head gently. If you happen to find my ring among the bandit's possessions, please bring it back to me. It's easy to recognize. My name is engraved inside the band. Svalana drops her eyes, lowering her voice. There is one more thing. Among the bandits is a dark-haired woman who wields dual axes. She's not bad in a fight. In fact, she can be extremely dangerous and cruel. But please, I beg you, show her mercy if you have the chance. I'd be happy to help Svalana. She nods. I'm so grateful. I'm so, so grateful for your help. Alright, uh, tell me about yourself. How did you and your husband find the courage to establish a trading post in the Stolen Lands? It was Oleg's idea, though I supported him in it. We didn't realize how dangerous it was here, of course. At Restop, everyone respects the Sword Lands, or Sword Lords, and everyone's accustomed to relying on them. Even the mention of someone like Lady Jamandi could be enough to fend off a street thug or some other trouble. It could maybe even work in some places here, but not with the Stag Lord's men. What can you tell me about the Stag Lord? Uh, he's not just some average bandit. If no one puts a stop to him, he'll turn the Stolen Lands into his personal kingdom. A kingdom of fear and oppression. Uh, it would be a kingdom of... I mean, obviously I'm just going to give it the lawful good. Uh, it would be a kingdom of lawlessness. Once I've dealt with the Stag Lord, your life will improve. I can't thank you enough for the hope you've given me, but please, be careful. The Stag Lord is extremely dangerous. I have to go. Farewell. Enorio Eight Eyes. Who are you? Why are you here? Let's talk to you. Norio Eight Eyes. Uh, the elf looks straight at you, through the tangled hair falling over her face. Hey, you're the adventurer, right? Seeking your fortune in the Stolen Lands? You aren't the only one of your kind here. Take my advice. Keep your eyes open and watch your back. Sometimes the ones who call themselves your friends are more dangerous than your enemies. Judging by the elf's voice, it's obvious that she started the day with a jug of wine. Uh, who are you? The elf grunts. Norio Eight Eyes. Once upon a time, I was famous throughout Absalom. An oral eight eyes of the reckless six. Well, glory passes quickly. A few miserable decades later, and no one recognizes you on the street anymore. What a shame. Uh, what are you doing here? I sit here waiting for adventurers who are in need of... Sorry? I sit here waiting for adventurers who are in need of help. We may be sitting here in a backwoods tavern, but in Absalom, Absalom, I have a lot of friends who are eager to make a few coins. They have brave hearts, but shallow pockets. A little gold would be welcome would be a welcome change for them. I can send them a message and they will come from Absalom through a portal. If you're interested, just give me a sign and we'll arrange everything right away. Okay, so I think this is how we recruit, because we can... You have the narrative characters, like the, like Lindsay and uh, Amiri and Valerie, and, and those, those guys. We have the narrative characters, but you can also recruit mercenaries that are like generic, but custom uh, companions. Uh, why are you called Eight Eyes? Once long ago, did I read the last thing? Yeah, I did. Once long ago, I could spot an enemy and pin him to the wall before he could even think of attacking. Some said I had eight eyes and looked all around at once. Though it seems I've outlived my nickname. Anoro stretches her arm forward, her palms, her palm trembles noticeably. I've been drinking so much lately, it's best I don't test my skills too often. Where were you when the trading post was attacked? I was hunting. Got a little lost in the mist, which is the first time that's happened to me. I guess I should go easier on the drink. But don't you imagine I'd be scared of a good fight. If only I'd known I was missing all the action. But I see you've got everything under control. Uh, would you like to join me? Uh, no. I've got enough things to do already. You'd better manage on your own. A famous Pathfinder here in the middle of nowhere. Why? You want to know how one could exchange the life of a Pathfinder for this sorry, drunken rat hole? Light and Anorio's eyes just go out as if someone had blown out a candle. You lose all your friends because of one scumbag, and then you understand. I was the only one to return from the final campaign of the Reckless Six, and whatever's left of me can't be called a seeker anymore. Nora remains silent for a long time, as if wondering if she wishes to poke the old wound. Here's a story. Our leader, Vermel, was the best of us. Wise, brave, friends with everyone. One of those friends, a Divian Adressant, sent him a disturbing letter. He stumbled, over, stumbled upon mention of some ancient books in the art of necromancy. Secrets like those are best hidden, best left hidden forever. 
Trust me, I've seen what that kind of magic can do. The elf bites her lip. To make a long story short, these volumes were supposedly hidden in the catacombs of Gallowspire. We decided the books should be retrieved and kept safe by the society. We gathered in a quiet tavern, discussed the expedition, and then proceeded to Ustalov. It was a normal mission, a quick and quiet recovery. An oriel... An oriel... An oriel, it's probably an oriel, smiles bitterly. But everything turned out to be much more complicated. We barely made it through the Witch Gate Forest. All those terrible living trees, undead druids, and their arches of bone. It was a miracle we managed to make it out alive. We'd chosen Ranchurch to stop at. It was marked on Vermelt's map as a safe enough haven to hole up in and lick our wounds. How I wish that had been true. Vermelt was the first to perish. He was attacked by one of the monsters hiding in the stables. It tossed him about like a feather and threw him down an ancient well. His shout echoed for a long time and I didn't hear the sound of him landing. And then, Anoriel pauses and turns away, hiding her eyes. Enough. I shouldn't have gotten into this. Who am I to stir up others' feelings with all my chatter? We better forget about it for now. Maybe I'll tell you more some other time, but not today. Um, want to know more about the Pathfinder Society? What exactly are you interested in? The purpose of the Society. It's a school of adventurers. We search for those who are eager to test their skills, and we educate them and give them ideas about where on Glorian they might seek their, their fortune. They look for forgotten knowledge, secrets, and lost artifacts. They're explorers and pathfinders. We're a sort of mutual assistance club for adventure lovers. We exchange experience, share knowledge, and keep careful records in case it proves useful to future expeditions. And also we publish books for thrill seekers and bored urban teenagers from wealthy families. Uh, what kind of members does the CB society have? All sorts of adventurers. We have representatives from all races, religions, and beliefs. The Grand Lodge is in Absalom, but there are many smaller lodges through, throughout Galorian, or Galo Galarian. Sorry, it's reading quite a bit. I'm getting a little lost in the words. And the adventure captains direct pathfinders to their goals from across all the corners of the world. There are many renowned heroes in the society, and many scoundrels as well, whose service to, to the society has brought them fame. Who does the society support? I mean, who does it serve? No one in particular. Pathfinders try not to get involved in the quarrels of others. They serve only the spirit of adventure, and sometimes they happen to save the world. However, that doesn't mean there are no black sheep among the Seekers. We'll talk about it later. Regarding your story... I wonder if she'll keep talking about it. What happened in Renchurch? Alright, so I probably have to be a higher level. Alright, I need loyal and experienced fighters. I have friends like that. Just decide who exactly you need and they will come on my signal. This will cost you 2,000 gold pieces. I don't have 2,000 gold pieces. So it won't even let me look at him, I guess. Uh, do I want to spend this episode meeting everybody? Yeah, let's talk to Lindsay. A halfling girl with tousled hair wearing a dusty traveler's outfit sits chewing the tip of her quill. Just a moment. How should I put this? Oh, I know. She scribbles something quickly in a notebook scrawled with verse, raises her eyes, and gives you a bright smile. Oh, hi. Uh, tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? No, oh, this is a lot to talk about. Well, let's see. We'll probably... How about this? I'll make a deal with everybody. Uh, we'll get to know one companion a day. We got to know her. She's not necessarily a companion, but... We don't need to... I don't want to spend an entire episode getting to know everybody. It's a lot of reading and a lot of not, a lot of progress not made, I guess. It's not the Oleg. Greetings. Oleg seems to be in a good mood and greets you warmly. He certainly ruffled those villains' feathers. Well, anyway, a new day, new troubles. Have you seen the fog? Never seen anything like it before. The road to Restov looks like someone spilled milk, and it, it just hung in the air. I couldn't see anything through that soup, not even with a torch. Feels like witchcraft to me. I bet the stag lord's involved somehow. Rumors say he deals with all kinds of bad magic. Uh, show me your wares, because I need... To sell all this garbage. Do anything? No, you just silver. I have enough for the, uh... The full plate. I might just go for the half plate right now, for the sake of my...
Alright, good. It does show you what the other characters can and can't wear. She would do well with... Yeah, if I got two half plates, it only increases hers by one, so it's not a huge, huge increase. I really want the full plate, like, really. Oh, sorry for the desk bump. I feel like, I don't know, I always do this. Whenever I start an RPG out, I try to buy the best stuff that, like, the first merchant has. And I always end up regretting it, because I'll be broke for a long time, or what have you. Like, all my starting gold will be gone. So I might get two half plates. I mean, it'll increase both of our armor class. It increases mine by three. Uh, it's, I mean, that's that's a... I only had one. Well, shoot. What does she currently have? Because she can use... She has hide armor. So it's chain shirt. Same thing. Chain mail. It's only 150 for two more armor class. I uh, just want the one. Hold on. This weighs less for the same amount of armor class. I know I should be looking at like the uh, dexterity and all the other stats, but I think the breastplate would be better for her. It is more expensive. That's fine. I have money, so why not? Ooh, scimitar plus one. I used to, when I was young, I used to call these skim skimitters or scimitars. I also used to call molotovs molotovs or. Sorry, I used to call Molotovs Molotovs. See, I still mix it up every now and then. But alright, 800 gold for these upgrades? Absolutely. Let's, uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like how, like, your undergarments still show through the, uh, armor like that. It means that the colors you pick actually count for something. Awesome. You can't wear either one of these. I'm not worried about you then. Back to your wares, and we'll sell these to him. What's this? Cloak of Resistance plus one. Okay. Well, it's uh only fifteen for these. All right, that's fine. I didn't really. On all saving throws, I'll probably give it to her. Again, she's the frontliner. She needs uh, all the tankiness she can get. Alright, tell me about yourself. Why open a trading post in such a dangerous place? I just dislike the noise. Oleg answers it reluctantly. I'm from Restov. Cities are complicated. Lots of people, and each with their place on the shelf. Vow before this one. Fear this one. Don't do business with a third, but be sure to be extra nice to the fourth. Your villages are a little better. Everyone likes to stick their noses into each other's business. I just wanted a place where I could be my own master, so I ended up here. Uh, I need to take care of the stag lord. Do you know of anything that could help me find him? It's quite a task you've set yourself on. The stag lord has a fortress somewhere in the area, but only a few chosen from the most trusted of his rabble were ever invited. The location of the fortress is a heavily guarded secret, and with this fog hanging around, I imagine it'd be even harder to find. I suppose you could try to follow the trail of those bandits who attacked the post before. They came from the southwest from the side of the Thorn River. From the side of the Thorn River. Alright, the fortress might be there, or at least some large camp of theirs where you can find some information. Uh, what else can you tell me about the Stag Lord? Not much. Not like I've sat down and shared a cup of wine with the man, you know. But I think he arrived in the Stolen Lands less than a year ago, from what I've heard. But as soon as he got here, he took over everything. I read to Restov, tried to warn them that the Stag Lord wasn't some typical gang leader, but they didn't listen. The rumors about him are horrible. He could kill a person if they so much as disagree with him. He never reveals his face. Those who've seen him up close report the same thing. Ugly scars cover every inch of his skin, not covered by his clothes. The Sagwart's past is a mystery. He just arrived one day. He was immediately a power to be reckoned with. I guess the most surprising thing about him is that he has many followers who admire him as he has many to obey him out of fear. He's got some inner strength in him, or maybe an inner madness. There are many who seem to follow him because of that madness, like it was some kind of virtue. Right, we'll speak another time. Oh, man. Uh, Bakken, or Boken, frowns as he ostentatiously examines the nearest wall, hands in his sleeves. Without turning to you, the old man finally says in a dull voice, You want some potions? Yeah, show me what you have. Wand of Mage Armor. Ooh. Okay. 
Um, yeah, super worried about that right now. We'll talk to him as well, and then we'll continue on our way. That's why I didn't want to talk to the companions, because I'm talking to all the people in the uh, outpost here. But we can talk to our companions anytime. Uh, can I help you in any way? Boken glances at you, suddenly interested. Well, since you're asking, there's a cave nearby. I used to pick berries in there, but the place has been overrun by spiders. The berries are red, look a lot like raspberries. Fang berries, I call them. I'd be real grateful if you gathered a basket of them and brought them back. Just be quick if you do. They spoil quickly. Fangberry cave has been revealed. I'll say a bucket of moon radishes. They're a rare and mysterious plant. I don't know where to find them, but I know that kobolds gather them and value them highly. It's not a huge deal, really. I'd do it myself if I were younger, but if you're willing, I'll pay you. Three potions for the berries and a purse full of coins for the radishes. Why do you need fang berries and moon radishes, Boken? You want to know, huh? Well, I'll gladly tell you after you bring them to me. Alright, well, I'll try to help. Just watch out, alright? Don't end up someone's lunch. Remind me what you, you do here. Alright, he's... Alright, so we gotta find fang berries and, um... Moon radishes. I will guide us. Moon radishes at attract kobolds. All right, let's go to that. All right, so Fangberry Cave. I'm gonna try and do that first. I think get some more experience, get some more moony. By that I mean money, of course. Oh, Alright, I wanted to give her... Alright, yeah, that's what I need to do. So, it was this Fangberry Cave? Yeah. That takes us back the way we came. Let's head towards Fangberry. Random encounter, what was that? Oh, that's terrifying. I wonder if that can happen to your companions and then they're gone for good. An old jittery man in squalid clothing shuffles up to you. His gray hair is unkempt, and he continually clenches and unclenches his wrinkled, freckled hands. When he stops and looks up at you, his eyes widen and he tugs at his beard. Remus. A strange weather, invisible fog creeping out of the woods, soars beyond the sky, obscures the sun and the moon. Strange. The old man shakes his head, his eyes shifting about seemingly at random. I don't like this old man. Looks like the kind who can cast the evil eye. Now who are you? The old man freezes for a moment. Remus, but that won't help with the fog. What are you doing here? The old man raises a thick eyebrow curiously. I do nothing. Breathe, walk, observe. The fog looks visible enough to me. I see more than ever, but I never see so never seen so much before. The old man wipes his hand across his face and sighs warily. Well, someone must look. No one else can. Visible fog. Does that mean you can find your way through it? The fog is wrong. It hinders your legs, not your sight. I wish not to try. Alright, I should probably go. The old man stares at you intently. You hasten? You should. Your rival wastes no time. He races, but in another direction. He searches for power. He'll find it. All the more reason not to linger. Farewell. Turning back to the trading post and look south. There's an ancient tomb. Look for him there. The old man turns and walks away slowly, muttering softly. Once stolen, the land should be reclaimed. Once reclaimed, binded with the claimer shall it be. Binded, merged, joined by unbreakable ties. Claiming the land, claiming its pain, claiming its death. Ancient tomb has been revealed. Alright, thanks, Remus. You've been a real help. I was prepared to throw down with that old man if need be. It's been a pretty slow episode so far. Ooh, what's this? Blackberry Meadow. Bony bushes full of juicy berries still grow on the side of an old orchard. Well, yeah, let's go there. So I can't go there? I go like... Alright, let's fight. I guess I have to go left off the road there. That's fine. Destroying his phylactery won't kill a lich immediately, but it's necessary to defeat the monster. We have a bandit necromancer. That's gonna be annoying. Let's um, 
Since you charge it in here to the cleric. Or... I must be doing it. We shall overcome. What's he got the cleric first? Of course, she got feared. Need to find immunity. This is the second time that's happened to her. Valerie, you can come back anytime you, you like. Oh, well, hey, look, a breastplate. See, that's why I shouldn't spend money in the beginning. <sighs> Man, I'm awful about this. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to... Yeah, because that's what she's wearing. Um, get rid of that for him. Give it to her. Again, she should be on the front line, but she keeps getting feared. There we go. I like to favor my, my main character, or my player character most of the time. But the tank, since I'm not playing the tank. Uh, should get the... Alright, let's go down this way, and I guess if we go here, it's going to take us here. Or not. Alright, well, let's just go to Fangberry Cave. Trying to find my way to that other orchard, but... Can't get there yet. Ooh, kobolds. Alright, you go for the alchemist. Let's make sure she moves ahead, and then, well, no one else is going here anyway. We shall overcome. Oh wow. No. It's my fault, positioning in the way that I am. It'd be cool because if she had like because she has a tower shield. If she was able to um attack. Oops, sorry. Get down there. Yeah, it'd be cool because she has a tower shield if she could. Uh, like block that AOE effect, like it would hit her shield and then like split off and not hit the people behind her. Our time has come. Oh, I forgot he had bless. I should have used that. Well, maybe not there. I don't think it was necessary there. The oh, wrong key. I just want to check this area because uh, they said fangberries and her kobolds. Those were kobolds, so you never know. Yeah, my bad. Didn't mean to leave anything behind. Alright, let's get to Fangberry Cave. Where we're gonna fight spiders. I hate spiders. I'm sorry, I used to hate spiders. I'm kind of impartial towards them now, unless they're in my house. In which case, I will kill every last one of them. Probably don't need to heal yet. I will quick save, though, in case I regret those words. Forwards. Now we'll explore to the south first. Then we'll. Without a doubt. Hello. Hmm. Zod. Let us strike as one. Is she in charge range yet? Nope, not yet. Uh, let's keep. I will not falter. Well. Then back for now. Just letting the ink dry. I'm listening. Charge. 
We shall overcome. Tear them apart! Attack! I can't keep this up much longer. You'll be fine. Um, let's see here. Oh, that was super ineffective. Alright, mess this guy up. Voila. Oh. Oh, cool, I got some skin. Some hide. Silver embroidered purse. Alright. Some mild treasures. The treasures, nonetheless. I love loot, by the way. I don't think I've uh, explained in this I will guide this Let's Play yet how much I love loot. It's my favorite part of any game. It looks like it's going down to the, the cave. You can even see a spider there. So let's explore around that. I might rest before we go in. Because once we go in, if we try to rest, we're probably more likely to be attacked because we're in a cave. I'd rather have all the spells up that I need. So let's uh let's go over here. Let's rest up until here and to victory. I right, bring it on giant spider. Oh, you guys gotta stop missing. There we go. Suck it, spider. Giant spider legs, a cooking ingredient. Oh, let's try resting again. this morning and see some pictures embroidered on it pine trees clouds and owl bear fighting a troll spill it out who did that i confess it was i i only meant to patch them up a bit and got a little carried away okay cool We've got four rations and Lindsay can't cook, it seems. That's a... Both times we've camped, she's failed at cooking. And we're all healed up a little bit, so let's head into the cave and... Find us some fangberries. I'm gonna let this episode go over a little bit since I, uh... You deserved it! Any last wishes? Anything is possible. Stand with me. Oh man, spider swarms. Gross. So tired. Strike as one. Oh, zero damage. We don't do. We can't do damage to them, right? Because it's a uh, swarm. Let's see. Do I have a? I probably don't have a spell or anything. <sighs> yeah, it's zero damage to him each time. I think I need. I need magic, don't I? You need like a bludgeon weapon, I think. I require healing. All right. Uh, well, probably. I know I have. I have scrolls for this. Hold on. 
Oh, then I can equip them in combat, can I? So if I can, so I have a, let's see, not scroll of Bane. Maybe I don't. I have Alchemist Fire, though. Might be in a bit of a pickle here. I don't have the means to kill uh kill these guys. Serves you right. Oh she's down, it doesn't matter. Well me. Yeah, we're in trouble. Oh boy, I didn't I didn't plan on this. Stay behind me. Okay. <laughs> me. Oh, right. All right, well we're just gonna load. Um, shoot. Yeah, I don't have the means to deal with uh, a swarm of spiders right now, and that sucks. I'm gonna have to call the episode here, and uh, probably have to figure out what to do off camera. I might go back and buy a. So I think bludgeon weapons work against the swarms, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. So I'm gonna have to go back and buy a warhammer or something, or a uh, earth breaker. So I wanted to get him an earth breaker anyway as his uh, go-to weapon. Oh, why is he still wearing this? Oh, I mean, it's a plus one to armor class. Well, shoot. Man, I don't want to call the episode here because I don't want to... I feel like it's too short and I didn't really get anything accomplished. But I am going to figure out... I'm going to go back, I'm going to get my bludgeon weapon off camera and then the next episode we'll go back to Fangberry Cave. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to catch y'all in the next episode.